Have you ever been angry that you like vegetables? Like you go almost your entire life hating them, all right? Like the mini trees until you douse them in butter and oil and cheese, which by the way, at that point, mother, they're not healthy anymore. Why would you even eat vegetables if they're no longer vegetables? It's glorified popcorn. It's lost the essence of being healthy. Even a little mini like corn things you thought were cute in grade school, maybe it was just me, but anyway, ended up tasting like the used part of your old eraser. But then as you grow up, you are for some reason or another okay with eating eating vegetables that's how i feel about the new bmw m design and since every single time a new design from bmw actually comes out the previous generations either jump rope in value going one or going down in terms of any value across the line but there's always been one car that has gone down so far the proverbial pole you may be starting to think to yourself does it matter if the fender's rusted for 400 horsepower i'm alex alex had a fine instagram and today we're gonna be talking about a car that had like the best of everything of what a car is supposed to be a car that no matter what condition it's in is an absolute blast to drive drift and pretend you are ken block because you just happen to have a car that can go sideways very very easy a car that while clean can be upwards of like 20 to 30 to even fifty thousand dollars the wish app versions are the same price as a 350z ladies and gentlemen today we're going to be talking about you wanting to own an e39 m5 <laughs> If you're just jumping into this video, wait, ooh, mm, where is it? Forget. Don't forget to subscribe so you can keep making banging videos like this. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension for your newly acquired BMW M5 or otherwise, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com. This is for you, Dakota. I hope it doesn't fall. Plus we have an aftermarket gallery. It's pretty sweet. Actually, if you do have an aftermarket, you can add it, feminineindustries.com for slash add. But anyway, we'll get into it later. The E39 M5 was introduced in 1998 at the Geneva Motor Show and was the first M5 to use a V8, baby, and a newer, better aluminum front suspension and a multi-link rear suspension. This is important and we'll get into that a little bit later, all right? The engine itself was different, not only for the extra two cylinders, but the fact that it came with electronically actuated individual throttle bodies, double, not single, double Vanos variable valve timing, all right? Not one Vanos, not one Euro VTEC, but two. All right, this is a big deal. It's what makes them a lot of fun to drive. It is the Euro equivalent of VTEC. And VTEC, even though it gets a little bit of brass, all right, it is a fun thing to have on a car, okay? And it came with a semi-dry sump oil system. Paired with that, you got a six speed and you slap around the trunk and you're pretty much ready to roll. This car was something else. And the goal was that this car could take on the powerhouses of the E55 AMG, which at the time was also a powerhouse. It was a 5.4 supercharged V8 and the Audi S8, which was a naturally aspirated 4.2 liter V8. They weren't doing very well. And the M5 actually switched its components and shaved weight where it could because what it wanted to do was, was try to tighten the driving experience of this big car. And it did that because when you're behind the wheel, it doesn't always feel like you're driving a two ton car. It makes you feel like you're just driving a car with a lot of horsepower. It was just like a longer, slightly happier M3. It had a limited slip differential. It could still climb up to 7k rpm and with the v8 it was still naturally aspirated so there was no odd experiencing as you screamed through the gears it was all just there all at the right time it was just pure motoring bliss all right all the time forever and since the car was a 5 series and commanded a higher price from the factory the interior was just as nice as the exterior the designers focused on having ergonomic spread throughout the car take a look at your shift boot and you'll notice that the boot shifter lurches left baby it takes up a little bit more space it's not directly in the center for the driver the seats have extra thigh support for those ladies and gentlemen that just need a little extra thigh cushion okay the leather mm, consistent throughout the car and when plastic was used it was hidden pretty well nothing on the inside of these cars was extravagant but nothing nothing was ever missing unless you buy a new one and they just happen to not come with like window buttons and even though some design critiques weren't a huge fan of what they called the race boy design of the m5 at the time like the quad outlets and the exhaust and the fancy headlights they can just freak off that was actually a real thing people were actually upset about the quad taillights i'm not i'm not kidding they're probably the same people that loved when the c5 a6 hid their exhaust behind the bumper <clears throat> but who's laughing 
laughing now. In the early 2000s, the E39 would make waves and then get passed over for the next generation. And for the most part, people would actually forget about it just a little bit. BMW has this thing where they're constantly coming out with crazy new cars and people would always jump from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next. But BMW still carried a little bit of that, like maybe a little bit of hate for just constantly changing something that it was good. And when the E39 got surpassed by its next generation car, a couple of people started to get angry because you added more tech, more gadgetry, more power, but you started to lose a little bit of that soul that is in the E39 M5. And even though they are 20 years old now, a little bit of an old soul, they're still a fun car to drive. And that was just the thing. If you look at this car, it is a fantastic looking car because BMW does BMW things and stuff massive kidney grills and starts to get real weird with some of their stuff because they always need to be at the front and center of design elements. And sometimes people don't want that. But there was something beautifully raw about this car. The mechanicalness of it with the transmission and the rev happy balanced power of a 4.9 liter V8 was something that started to get lost as the years progress. And now we have people like you and people like me, looking at them a little bit like a Reese's peanut butter cup right before bedtime after you've brushed your teeth. Like you probably shouldn't. I mean, you're an adult, why not? Like just try it, buy it, see what happens, see if you like it. Most enthusiasts look at this car as one of the best four-door sedans ever built with its understated design and perfect mix of leather wood interior, okay? But we, ladies and gentlemen, are not here to talk about the history of the E39 M5, oh no, okay? We're here to talk about you wanting to own one of these burnout happy four-door saloons. So you want an E39 M5. Well, set down your plastic headlight tabs and grab your favorite M shirt because we're about to sit down and talk about it and what it's likely actually actually like, one of those words didn't line up in that sentence, to own one of these bad boys. There's two things you're gonna wanna know before you jump into this car. Number uno, you now own one of the purest examples of a naturally aspirated V8 saloon. Sedan. That will likely get you an immediate ticket and higher insurance. It's just gonna happen. You know it's gonna happen, we know it's gonna happen. Save an extra $212.75 because you're gonna get the ticket. I'm sorry about the inevitable mess the car will probably give you at some point in your life as well because that is number two. Because you are buying a 20 year old four door saloon borderline supercar at that point. Buying a used E39 M5 is a unique experience. You can get one for $5,000. You can get one for $50,000. You can get them in the widest gamut quality mileage modifications and nearly all M5s on the lower side of the spectrum will generally have higher mileage. Like 150,000 miles plus is pretty normal. And they'll almost always uh, be straight piped because because it's a V8. Like, what do you want? What do you want me to say? All right. It's, it, it just, wah, like it just, I don't know. People are going to straight pipe their V8s. People do it. All right. Euro kids, $5,000. You're going to do it too. There's usually rust around the wheel well and the door jam, especially on the driver's side. And the check engine light will probably be on. This is the thing. And let me tell you though, if you do this right, you can have one banger of a car. I'm telling you, this is a great car. You just gotta be careful with which one you pick up. The cars have a few quirks in the reliability department. For starters, these are a couple things that you're probably gonna wanna keep your noggin on if you're looking to actually pick one of these up. They're double vanos. Didn't come with a screw for the solenoid cover that led to vibrations and damage. It was fixed in 2001, but if you get a pre-2001, you're gonna wanna make sure that was fixed. There's carbon buildup. That's actually a real thing for the E39. You wanna get it cleaned up so that you can have a happy car that's not choking on itself. That's something else that you're gonna wanna make sure that gets taken care of. And probably the biggest boy, the biggest thing with these cars, which seems to be like an early 2000s thing for almost all Euro cars, is the timing chain. The tensioner guides are made of plastic, which wear over time. Now, not bad for a brand new car when you don't really have to worry about it, but it's bad for a 20 year old car with 200,000 miles. Get those things fixed ASAP and assume whoever it is that you're buying it from hasn't done it either. These cars get to a mileage and age point where people will say things are done, but they were done 14 years ago. All right, which means you gotta do it again. You're on like the second cycle of a maintenance count. So don't let them just trick you saying it was done. Also, plastic cooling components cripple old BMWs, something fierce. It's probably why their interior is actually so nice. I mean, honestly, you gotta cut corners somewhere and it was probably in, in that area. You'll want to check the leaks prior to purchase and plan on doing a dang near full rebuild if you're seeing a little bit of the coolant leak on the ground. Remember them tray covers, if they have them, will uh, <clears throat> hide a lot of that. And if you just want to, ignorance is bliss, just keep her on. Bushings, heavy cars wear through bushings a bit more and it's just how she goes. But if you're buying one that's been around longer than you've been a thought in your dad's eye, there's a chance that those bushings haven't been replaced in a decade and can cause some less than exciting driving experience. Tighten those bad boys up, repair them and fix them and you'll probably experience a whole different car. 
Tires, suspension, bushings, different car every time, all right? But the pros almost 100% outweigh the cons and the reliability and the maintenance and some of the parts stuff that you're gonna have to do to the car when you pick it up. When you grab one of these and just give it a proper paint correction, clean up the little bits and pieces here and there, throw a watch on it, maybe a belt, and then jump into some coilovers, wheels, tires, tint, exhaust, intake, and you have, my friend, one of the best looking Jason Statham owning badass driving cars. These cars look fantastic. They just look so good on a set of mesh wheels, particularly BBS or even Ronal. Tires, almost always bet with a decent set of tires that you don't mind burning off because you are going to burn it off. The fact that it came with a manual transmission, it's begging you to do something dumb. Lots will end up with Nitto Neogens and Federals so they don't feel bad when showing off at a red light to somebody across the street that's staring at the car wondering what the hell it actually is. Suspension is almost always coilovers and is a huge improvement not only for the looks but for the sheer fact that 20 year old suspension components just sometimes start to fade and they just need a little help. SC suspension is a good place to start if you're on a budget or bill scene if you're like the uh oh you got money money kind of guy or gal whatever. Pro tip, you're better buying one with higher mileage, with more records than somebody with lower miles and less records per service. So make sure that if you are picking up a car that every single point that there could be maintenance records on, you grab because you are going to need that. Otherwise the car is going to backhand you and it's going to hurt really bad. Service is everything on the E39 M5. The E39 M5 is a super saloon. It's a car that'll make you smile and likely never want to sell. They aren't perfect, but they're so good. It doesn't doesn't even matter and you won't care. A 4.8, zero to 60, a six speed, manual transmission, a limited slip, differential, a V8 in a Euro car. They do those really well. A great interior. What else could you want? And the answer is nothing, all right? That's what. Just make sure you cross your T's and dot your I's in the maintenance department. And remember you're signing up for a little bit of heroic mode on some of it, depending on the price that you pick one up with. But what do you think about the BMW M5, particularly the E39? And if you'd rather argue about the kidney bean grill in the comments, I'm not opposed to it. But let us know what you want us to talk about next, Mr. Suzuki Cappuccino man or female. I see you. You want to keep your eyes peeled. Thank you. Day 69, it feels like. If you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmanindustries.com. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries, and we will see you later. Peace.